And this is a demonstration of the final capstone uh, uh, company analysis project. There's five elements in here. The, uh, we asked you to go through and evaluate the DuPont analysis, which we did earlier in the semester, cash conversion cycle and other measures of liquidity, the valuation metrics, the capital structure, and the weighted average cost of capital. Now, I'm just going to do this for Kroger and Tiffany's, and they're not really uh, in the same business, but they're, uh, they're a good way of illustrating some of the differences you may or may not see in your companies. All right, so with the DuPont analysis, it's a way of breaking down return on equity into the net profit margin, how much we make per dollar of sales, multiply that by sales over assets, and that gives you the return on assets, multiply that by the equity multiplier, assets per dollar of equity, and that gives you the return on equity. This is the part that shareholders are most interested in. We can see that Kroger is materially higher than Tiffany over the time period we're looking at here. All right, so. The analysis isn't just one's bigger than the other. We also want to look at why. And I see with Kroger, the net profit margin is much smaller than that of Tiffany's, but the total asset turnover is much higher. Okay, so Kroger has a relatively lower profitability per sales dollar. but they dominate in sales per dollar of assets. This is to be expected because a grocery store does a high volume of business and resells the same dollars of inventory multiple times during the year. Tiffany's holds a relatively high amount of assets, particularly inventory and doesn't make that many sales per dollar of assets, but instead rely on making a lot of profit per sale. The other major distinction between the two is the equity multiplier. is assets per dollar of equity. Kroger is materially higher and uses a lot of financial leverage, but that again reflects the nature of the grocery business, which is very stable and predictable. Therefore, Kroger can take on relatively more debt because their business model is so stable. And we saw stuff like that if we were to thumb down here and look in the uh, capital structure, we can see that Kroger has a lot more debt relative to the equity. Here we're using the market capitalization rather than the book value of equity. But you can see they have a lot of debt relative to Tiffany's. And percentage basis, you can see it's, uh, it's roughly 60-40 in this latest year.
Tiffany's over 90% equity if you're using the market value of the equity as opposed to the book value. <coughs> if we look down here and see that Kroger's beta is much lower and Tiffany's beta is much higher. The beta measures the risk relative to the equity risk relative to the other uh, other average company. So Tiffany's about twice as risky as average. We can also see that their yield to maturity on their long-term debt is much higher and, is, and on their short-term debt as well. That's because Tiffany's is a high-risk borrower. All right, and then for liquidity, Again, we've been looking at this all semester, so we should remember that one of the key differences in these two firms was that Tiffany's holds a lot of inventory, about a year and a half's worth. If they didn't replace any of it, it'd take a year and a half to sell it all off. Kroger, on the other hand, has about 26 days of inventory. That means that if they stop buying tomorrow, the store shelves would be empty in less than a month. So Kroger does a lot of turnover with their business, and Tiffany's does not. Tiffany's also has a relatively higher amount of accounts receivable relative to Kroger, and the day's payables are probably comparable between the two. But that means that their cash conversion cycle with Kroger, the cash conversion cycle is about seven days. That <coughs> They don't tie up a lot of cash in their working capital, and Tiffany's really does. Uh, the current ratio is so much higher for Tiffany's, and it's mostly because of the relatively high amount of inventory. And then if we look at the cash ratio, that's the, uh, the cash per dollar of current liabilities. Tiffany's is higher. That doesn't mean that they're safer. Tiffany holds a lot more inventory than Kroger, and its inventory is rel relatively illiquid. If they if they if they had to sell off sell off the inventory, they would have to deeply discount the price in order to move the merchandise. Kroger's inventory is highly liquid. Therefore, Kroger may have lower liquidity ratios, the current ratio, the quick ratio, and the cash ratio, but that is misleading unless because it ignores the composition of the current assets and their underlying liquidity. All right. With respect to the cash conversion cycle, Kroger does not tie up much cash in its working capital. But Tiffany does, again, mainly the inventory. All right, so that's a, a quick and dirty on, on the liquidity. If we're looking at some of the valuation ratios, the earnings per share don't really tell us that much. Uh, but when we convert it to a price earnings ratio, Kroger's price per dollar of earnings is for the most part lower than Tiffany's and that probably reflects the lower risk of Kroger uh, 
So Kroger's P.E. ratio is lower, but Kroger is lower risk. Kroger generates a lot more free cash flow than Tiffany's. And free cash flow is the cash available to pay to shareholders and investors. And it is positive during the entire period we are looking at. Tiffany's free cash flow has been dropping and is very low or negative in the last three years. Okay, therefore the price to free cash flow ratio doesn't mean anything here. Okay, and that's enough for the valuation matrix. Capital structure, and I already mentioned this when we were earlier looking at the earlier stuff. Kroger uses much more financial leverage, i.e. debt, in their capital structure. They can get away with that because their business is very stable and does not change much from year to year. And similarly, if, if, if I have a college professor job where it's hard to get fired or lose your job, my income might not be that much, but it's stable and predictable. There are no layoffs among college professors. On the other hand, if I'm in pharmaceutical sales, I never know whether I have a job from one day to the next. So it's feast or famine over at Tiffany's, and it is predictable and mundane over at Kroger. Interestingly, with Kroger is also the, uh, they use, Kroger uses a relatively large amount of short-term debt in their capital structure that that may be a reflection of the turnover in the working capital <clears throat> short term financing for short term assets All right, so that'll tell us something there. The uh, Tiffany's, most of their, most of their capital structure, it's over ninety percent uh, equity. Kroger's has been actually uh, decreasing a little uh, the amount of equity they have. So that that'd be something that we might want to add in there. Okay. Kroger has been decreasing the percentage of equity over the last five years, partly because of share buybacks, which we'll look at in the next section. <coughs> Uh, or rather up here, if you look at the share buybacks, they've been buying back shares. Tiffany's been issuing more. So they bought back a lot of their stock over the last five years. And how'd they do that? They borrowed the money to do it. Okay. All right. And then finally, the weighted average cost of capital. What we can see in here. If I go through here and... Get rid of some of these. Get rid of some of my rows. <clears throat> 
God. There we go. All right, so Kroger's weighted average cost of capital is much lower than Tiffany's, about one third of Tiffany's. That's a big difference. The main driver is that, the main drivers, I guess we should say, is that Kroger uses a lot of debt, which has a lower cost than equity, but they also have relatively low cost equity. Their beta is only 0 0.7, while Tiffany's beta is 1.85. That means that Kroger shareholders do not require as high a rate of return primarily because Kroger is low risk. Tiffany's high beta leads to a high cost of equity capital and that coupled with the high percentage of equity in the Tiffany capital structure You can see that the capital structure in Tiffany's is over 90% equity as compared to only 60% for Kroger's. So that high percentage of equity in the Tiffany's capital structure influences the WACC, the weighted average cost of capital. So and we saw that earlier when we were looking at the free cash flows. Tiffany doesn't generate a lot of money to pay those shareholders. And there ain't a whole lot of money floating around. So when we go back up here and look at the return on equity, and that's the return on book equity for the, the shareholders, Kroger's doing much, 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 much better. Now, it's mostly driven by the fact they use so much financial leverage. They borrow a lot of money and the money's really cheap, so they don't have to earn much per dollar of sales. It's about one and one and a half percent, which is normal for a grocery store. And they turn over the assets. That means they don't have to hold as many assets to make a lot of sales, especially at inventory numbers so much lower. Their return on assets is still lower than Tiffany's, but when they couple that with that financial leverage, the return on shareholders' equity is, is three two or three times as high. So there's a deeply, disturbingly detailed uh, example of some of the stuff that you may or may not see when you're doing your companies. Remember, your companies are all in the same business, though, so you might be talking more about how similar they are rather than about how different they are.